Hello everyone! In previous video we saw how to set up Node MCU to connect to wireless network and how to construct basic HTML page and integrate it into Node MCU sketch. In this video I will present detailed overview of simple HTML CSS framework which can be used in various projects to control Node MCU over web page. This can be very handy as you can replace physical buttons and displays and it's very easy to implement. There are frameworks like Bootstrap which you can use instead of this, but I wanted something with small footprint to integrate into Node MCU code. Other requirement was that it works offline, so embedding online CDNs into HTML header was not an option. Also, Bootstrap has kinda wide and spacey layout, and I wanted something more narrow and tight to show more information. I wanted remote control look. Also know that you can easily change colors and all other styles to best suit your needs. Ok, now let's dip into the code. On the left side is webui.html file from source files opened in Firefox browser. This is example with all the styles used in the framework. On the right side is the same file opened in Visual Studio Code Editor. Here you can see doc type tag and opening HTML and head tags. In head element we use title and meta char set elements from previous tutorial. Inside head element we add another meta element with name viewport and set it to 600 width and set user scalable parameter to no. We set fixed width of page and also don't allow resizing so it always stays the same size. This line ensures proper displaying of whole page. Also inside head element is style element. This is embedded CSS structure with defined classes which are a core of this framework. So here we define all the classes we will use later in body element of HTML page. These classes are used for styling different elements, mainly divs and links. First we define styles for whole body element. Give it background color white, set margin to auto and set text decoration to none so links are not underlined. Then we explicitly define no text decoration for links, A or anchor element. Now follows framework classes. First is container class which will be parent element to all other elements. We set display attribute to block, give it a width of 600 pixels, clear both sides of other elements and set margin to auto. Then we define rows. Class row has a height of 80 pixels, also has the same line height. Set bottom border, hide any potential overflow not to mess page layout if it occurs. Font size is set to 30 pixels. Now we define two additional helper classes for class row. Row SM or row small and row LG or row large. Row SM sets height to 60 pixels and font size to 24, while row LG sets height to 120 pixels and font size of 36. These two classes must be used with master row class. So whenever you want to define small row, you need to use both classes row and row sm. Just keep this in mind. On the left side in browser, you can compare height and font size for each row style. Then we define cells which will be inside row element. Cell LG occupies width of the whole row, 600 pixels. Cell MD occupies two-thirds of total width or 400 pixels and is used with cell SM which occupies just one-third or 200 pixels. Also on the left you can see how cells are arranged depending of class used. Next we define indicator class which is used when you have some device with two states like light if it's on or off. Please know that element with indicator class must be used inside cell element. It takes 60 pixel width from cell and it floats on the left side of the cell. Then we define btn or button class which is used with a element or link. Here we set width, font size and borders and colors for btn element. You can change all this very easily for your needs. Next we define coloring for cells and text. This is just quick example but you can change these attributes for your projects or add some more. On the left in browser you can see default coloring scheme. Also we add styles to use with indicator class. We define classes on and off which will change background color of element to green or red color visually indicating if device is on or off. 
and the last class bears name empty and is used when you don't want to show anything in cell, it just sets background and foreground color to white. It is used for example if you want to create arrow buttons like on keyboard, so you need some cells to be empty for layout purposes. And this is the framework, bunch of classes with similar concept like bootstrap, but very easy to customize and use. Now let's check elements in the body. Most of the elements are divs which use earlier defined CSS classes and for buttons we use anchor element or simply link. First we use parent div with class container so everything else is inside this container div and now we just stack divs with row class and then add divs with cell class inside row divs. So for main title we use div with row and row lg classes so we get 120 pixels high row. And inside row we add cell lg with background for titles, bg title. And inside this div element we simply type text we want for our title. As you can see in browser we have dark background and white color for font and the text we typed in cell div. Below we have examples of three rows, small, standard and large. In code, for first small row we have div with both classes row and row sm and then inside one large cell with info background which will occupy full width of row and then some text. Standard row has only row class in div and also one large cell with some text. Large row just like small one has row and row lg classes again with one large cell and some text. Now we have examples of cells. In this section we have total four rows, one for title and three for examples. For title we have standard row with large cell and title background. First we see example of one large cell, we already used that many times. Second example is one cell which occupies two thirds of width or 400 pixels, cell MD, and one small cell. This layout is useful when presenting some data from node MCU to user. You put name of parameter to larger cell and its value in smaller one. Examples are time, date, temperature, voltage, power and so on. And last examples of cells are three small cells in one standard row. So with row and cell classes you can combine tree by tree layout and in a sense create remote control for your projects. Here we see backgrounds example, two standard height rows, first with one large cell for title and other with three small cells for backgrounds demonstration. Now we come to indicators. First we have standard row, inside we have large cell and then inside this large cell we have div with indicator and on classes. If you remember earlier indicator class is 60 pixels wide and must be used inside div with cell class. I put here some symbol because if there is nothing inside div it won't show up. Same thing for indicator off, we have another div inside cell with indicator and off classes. You can put indicators inside any cell as you see below in buttons example we have cell md and inside this cell we have indicator for a light state. It's green means the light is on and on the right side of the row we see switch button. Now in code switch button is just a link, it's inside row element. Inside row we have one medium cell, cell md, with indicator on and text, light control. And below cell element is an a element, link, with btn class indicating this is our button. btn class has same behavior as cell sm, so whenever you use btn class it will occupy same position as cell sm, total of 200 pixels. And because this whole area is one big link you can click on it and because it's large enough there won't be problem touch clicking it on your smartphone. Right now href attribute of link element is set to hashtag or nothing but for this example you could write forward slash light toggle. And from previous video where we saw how to write root handle for web server in NodeMCU, in this case we would need to add a handle for a light toggle in NodeMCU's catch and then write some function which changes state of the light and return web page to user with updated data. This is how you control NodeMCU and devices connected to NodeMCU. First define handles in NodeMCU's catch 
and then use these handles in HTML as href attribute in links. And for the end, we have an example which we will recreate in one of the following videos. Title is example. Then we have some information like current time and current date. As Node MCU doesn't have real time clock integrated, you have two options get real time clock module and connect it to Node MCU board, or use NTP or Network Time Protocol servers online. In next video, we will see how to use NTP server to get current time and date so we don't need RTC module. IP address and wireless network name are always available in Node MCU code by calling methods on Wi Fi object. And the last feature will be switching onboard LED on and off. For this, we will construct light toggle handle in Node MCU sketch, which will call function to change onboard LED state. We have seen how to send commands to Node MCU with handles defined in Node MCU code and links in HTML page. But how to display data from Node MCU in HTML web page? This is the concept. For example, wireless network name, MassNet. Here we would write something like double hashtag wireless name double hashtag. And then in Node MCU code, after we convert this HTML code to C friendly string, you would replace double hashtag wireless name double hashtag with wireless network name from Wi Fi object itself, just as IP address or any other information you want to display in web page, like state of light, temperature, positions of curtains, or whatever a Node MCU is controlling. But this is subject for another video when this example will be recreated. <laughs>